Hello, my friends. Today I'm going to be doing another pastel painting for you. We are going to be doing this really cute little beach scene. It's very simple, but there's a lot to it at the same time. There's not a lot of elements to mess up. However, you can't mess up any of the elements or it uh, will be a disaster. But there are a lot of nice, rich oranges, pastels, salmon colors, purple colors. I just thought that would be really nice. I'm starting off with a piece of sanded pastel paper, probably UART. I've already matted it on some matte board. And what I've pulled out today are these Rembrandt Rich Oranges. I think I got these in a sketch box. But there's a lot of nice oranges in here. I've also pulled out my Blue Earth Brights to add some final finishing touches of some brightness. And then I am not working out of my studio box today. I pulled out my Paul Rubens. I think this is the box number two of 72s. There are a lot of nice yellows, oranges, pinks, purples. I thought this would be a really nice box to work out of instead of digging around in my studio box. All right, my friends, let me put down the camera and get started. All right, so this is what I've marked out. I actually went halfway where the sand, the uh, footprints end and it meets the beach here. Uh, I tried to go a third on that, but it just wasn't the right scale. So about halfway is where I've got my footpath ending. And of course, our grasses will be up here, but as you can see the grasses, this side's a little taller. Going down like this. This is where the grasses will end. This is where the beach will end and our water starts. This is our horizon line here, and then we can do our clouds. That was a piece of willow charcoal, by the way. I usually use willow charcoal when I do my sketches so I can see it through my underpainting. Now I'm using those harder pastels, those Rembrandts, to do my underpainting. And you really don't have to be precise with this step. I'm just throwing color down. The oranges make a very nice contrast to the purple grasses that are going to be going on top of it. And even in my, the final piece, there are there's still some orange sticking through. And I'm using isopropyl alcohol. Now I have something crazy like 99.9%. .9%. I use it for my alcohol ink paintings. You do not need something that strong. It can be like 70% and that'll do just fine. Mine just dries very quickly. And I'm using, it looks like a fan brush this time to work the, those uh, harder pastels into the paper. And the fan brush... I used it so I could make these interesting marks that where my grasses are going to go. Like I said, this doesn't have to be nice and neat. Even the messier, the better. I'm going in and reinforcing some of these darks. Since I really don't have the darks laid out in my underpainting, I went for contrast instead of dark. And boy, does that purple stick out on top of there. So I'm just laying in my darks, trying to build up the shadows and the grasses and along that footpath. And it's really important when you're doing skies and horizons with water that it's straight. You can't have a drunk horizon line. It's just not believable. Don't know what else to tell you. Now the clouds above the setting sun there were actually a little harder to put in than I thought. They didn't look like normal clouds. So I kind of took out my artistic license to make them a little more realistic. Because really the photograph, um, when you broke it down and really looked at it, it, you weren't really sure if those were clouds or not. But a lot of nice interesting colors in it. Very pretty. And they all reflected off the water and the sand down below. And that's really what I liked about it. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about this pastel set I am using, the 
Paul Rubens. I believe this set was gifted to me, and if I can find a video reviewing it, I'll put it up on the screen or down below. There was a first box, and I remember I received that set and thought, wow, these are some strange colors. They were kind of murky and dark and didn't really go together. Well, now I understand why perhaps it's because the second box had all these very beautiful bright colors and pastel. It was a very color heavy second set that goes really well with that first box. And I should have I should have brought this first box out for this and did some of the grasses down below with it, but I, I forgot I had it. And that's important for me to do every once in a while to go through my pastel box collection and bring out the boxes to use because most of the time I just go to my studio set and start going. I forget I've got all these wonderful little boxes all nice and pristine up on my shelf. Now this area here is actually sand and it looks like wet sand in the photograph from um, maybe a high tide rolling out and so it actually it was much cooler than some of the path sand. I believe I actually have to pull in two more purples for my studio box. One might be a Terry Lugwig, a nice blue based purple, a little cooler for that background, that background sand, I'll call it. Yeah, this, the purple that is in the Paul Rubens box was pretty impressive. Now it's not as dark as the Terry Ludwig eggplant that everybody loves. I don't even know if I have that, but I do have comparable dark purples. This wasn't quite that dark, but it was nice. And you know, it looks like I'm throwing down a lot of color on my paper, and I'm really not. You can see through it. Um, just in camera, it looks like I've got a lot of color down. I am spraying it mainly just to set the color, bring the tooth back a little bit, and that's just alcohol. Um, I do sometimes use a final fixative at the end, but during the painting, I'm mostly just spraying it down with alcohol. I really like to do that. I'll probably do that once or twice through a painting's process. But these are actually very light layers. Now the final finish touch maybe is a little thicker but like when I'm laying all these purples down across the sand, they're all very light layers. And you can still see that orange poking through at this step. And actually in the final piece, you can still see the orange poking through. I like that. If I'm going to go to the work to put all this bright orange down, I want it to peek through. There's a lot of interesting... Uh, shadows in this sandy path out to the beach. Um, I had a lot of fun recreating this. A lot of colors you didn't expect in sand. I mean, it's all in the shadow. Oh, here's Fizz. She's coming to inspect my work. She does this from time, time to time. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if she tries to bat a few pastels off my table maybe taste a couple of them. She's really looking for the uh, watercolor paint jar so she could uh, drink some of it. That's her favorite. If you think she looks a little strange, that's because she just got her hair did about a week ago. She has uh, another lion cut. We shave her pretty, pretty short in the uh, hot Florida heat. She likes some of that bulk off of her. She does go outside on a leash, so she um, is out in the elements from time to time, and all that black fur was just a little too hot for her. So she's got her summer cut going. Now I'm back at it, just trying to lay some of these shadows in the sand. I didn't want to lay that whole path in dark purple and lay all this light colored sand on top of it. So we're, we're kind of backtracking a little bit here and there with that dark purple. I typically try not to do that, but every once in a while, you just can't pull it off. Okay, now it's time for the grasses. And they really have a really dark center mass to them, I noticed. 
and it's almost reddish. I'm just checking to see where uh, where my frame is. Every once in a while, it doesn't hurt to put uh, your picture in frame so you know where you're, you're going and where you're going to end. But yeah, there's, in the grasses itself, all that beautiful sunset colors reflecting off of them. Beautiful oranges, salmons. There's even like a dark raspberry color coming from them. Well, there's that really fun raspberry color that I added to them. Uh, this is a very soft pastel compared to some of the other pastels in this set, so I really had to watch how uh, hard I pushed on that. And now we're down to making some of the singular grass strokes. This is, I believe, just a new pastel in a very dark purple. And I'm just flicking it around, making grasses. They're not crazy. They weren't going in every which direction. Most of them were standing up or slightly angling out towards this little footpath thing going on. And you could tell in the, the distance, of course, they were very dark and purple. And as it came forward closer to the viewer, they actually became lighter. Like there was some miracul miraculous light hitting it but it caused some interest, so I went ahead and put it in there. Now this orange is also a new pastel, but I break out some of my, gosh, I think you pronounce it draw, draw. Um, you can barely just see them. They're, they're at the bottom there. One's peach and one's like a murky greenish brown. I really love those. I got some in open stock through Dakota Pastels, and I think that's going to be my next purchase, is a small set of those. I, I like them more than the new pastels. They're slightly softer. I like the roundness to them, and I don't know what it is about them, but I, I like them more. So I'm going to get a set of those to make my interesting grasses and scrapes and tree branches and things like that. And this weird murky brown green, of course, it's very universal. Now, here's where I'm trying to put in the actual foot marks in the sand. And this was really tricky. How do you do that? How do you do that in pastel? Well, I'm actually making some marks to go by. And then I have to lay more of those shadows back into each individual foot mark to make it look realistic. Of course, the further back it goes, the more in the distance it is, it's less detail. And this is just a squirrel hair brush that I'm knocking some of those harsh lines off with because in the picture it's very soft. You know how sand is, there's no real harsh edges on it so I use every once in a while I use a brush just to lighten things up I, I like to use the natural hair ones I think that was a golden maple maybe something like that so now I'm just putting in some highlights in the sand from the uh, beautiful sunset and making some final touches here and there trying to so smooth out that sand Overall, this was a really fun little uh, painting to do. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of elements here, but you can't really have one of them look weird or your whole painting will be off. So that it does make it hard. And then I was thinking about putting a little uh, boat out there in the water with a reflection on it. But I decided to go with just with some birds. It needed something out there. I was also going to put some maybe seashells or something up close. But, you know, it, it wasn't in the picture. The picture is interesting on its own. So I didn't want to add a whole bunch of extra stuff to my painting. But, yeah, I thought it needed some seagulls. So I do add those at the end here. Just making some, inter some interesting little bits and bobs in the end of my grasses.
I'll mess with the painting a million times before I call it done. And I probably should stop 15 minutes before, but you know, when do you stop? When is it done? But here's the, yeah, here's the little seagulls. I think it really adds a nice touch to it. Finished piece. Um, if I had to go back and fix some things, I would have made the darks in these grasses redder and darker. But I mean, other than that, I think it turned out pretty good. I did enjoy this piece. These were very fun colors to paint with. And I re I'm really glad I pulled out this set. I forgot just how good it was. And I really do enjoy all these bright colors that came from it. I only had to supplement a couple. I think uh, two purples, the, a little more cooler purple. And I brought out some smaller, harder pastels to make some little, you know, grass marks. But other than that, the whole rest of it was done with these Paul Rubens. And yeah, those are really good pastels, if you were wondering. I think they're in line with my Sennelier. I'm not sure if they're quite that soft, but they are very soft. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. If you like the little pastel tutorials I've been doing, let me know down below. I really do enjoy doing these for you. And if that's the direction that you would like me to take with my channel, I am all ears. Anyway, guys, I will see you in my next one. Bye.